Welcome everyone to the TSD 2020 webinar. My name is Alessandro and I'm a technical consultant as part of the support team here at Trimble. We'll be running through some new features introducing TSD. If uh, you have any questions at any point, feel free to type them in and send them and we'll be answering them at the end of this webinar. In this webinar, we'll be covering features introduced or expanded in Tech Structure Designer 2020 and subsequent service packs. This video will showcase features available in Tech Structure Designer 2020 with Service Pack 3 installed. We'll be comparing the new features with Tech Structure Designer 2019i to showcase the difference where relevant. While well, the fine functions has always been available in Tech Structure Designer, we have made some improvements that can facilitate locating entities in the model particularly in large models where the item is located on the interior of the structure. As you can see in this model, there are a number of beams located in the inside of the structure. We'll proceed to find member 1B63. We can see in version 2019i that the foreground members hide the found member. In addition, the find dialog prevents the user from rotating or working on the model while the function is in use, so a better view of the model cannot be achieved. With version 2020, we now have the option to ghost the unselected items. This is on by default. This option shows the structure as ghosted, so the found member is in clear view. We can now also rotate or zoom to the area to get a closer view or view from a different angle. The find function also provides an option to create a cutting plane perpendicular to the, cutting, to the current view angle. This is dependent on the angle the, the angle the structure is at when we click select. Rotating the structure and clicking on select again will change the cutting plane created. Note that this can only be selected when ghosting is on. The ghosted tool has been expanded to allow the ghost on selected tool in all views and allowing for these two views in conjunction when, with the modeling or editing of the structure. We'll make some changes to the structure in a 3D view just to showcase this, but this also applies to other views such as frames, levels, substructures, and other views. The selection highlights in TSD have been improved from previous versions. We will select a number of columns and beams. Previously, a multi-item selected would color all selected items on the same shade, and the different selected entities are listed in the drop-down menu of the properties window. As you can see here, the color remains constant whether you have selected beams or columns in the drop-down menu of the properties window. In version 2020, two shades of magenta are used. The member color is updated depending on the item selected in the drop-down menu. This makes it easier to identify the entities that are under review or edited through the properties window. We can see here how the columns are highlighted while the beams remain in a matte tone. For slabs, the entire slab group is colored while the local selected panel is highlighted. In previous versions of TSD, it was only possible to provide full releases for beams. Beams could either be fully fixed or pinned in either the major and or minor axis. This has been expanded to allow a partial fit city release. This allows the user to provide partial fit city to the connection in either direction. This can be set through the beam properties or throughout the review view. To set this through the beam properties, open the edit dialog and access the releases section. When M wide and or MZ are ticked, the option to adjust the stiffness will appear for the corresponding direction. To edit this in the review view, change the mode in the properties window to rotational stiffness. Set the remaining parameters and click on the ends as normal. The partial fit city can only be applied to beams which releases are set to full effects, so to adjust their stiffness. If the beams have any other type of releases, such as pin, then they'll be grayed out and you will not be able to change the rotational stiffness. So Note that the representative colors have now changed and the original, for the original moment collection. Previously it was orange, now it's dark blue. In addition to this, users are now able to provide a moment release in either direction for columns of any material. 
This allows the user to have a full effect release in one direction while pinned in the other. A warning is provided in the edit dialog to alert the user of these changes. This will not stop the analysis or the design and is intended to inform the user. Naturally, if it's intended, a warning, the warning can be ignored. Further expansions to the review view can be found in the legends for the section, material grade, SFRS, size constraints, and UDA, UDA reviews. This with the section review of the review view, but it applies to the previously mentioned areas. As you can see in 2019i, the legend shows a limit of 10 items. Item, items listed beyond these 10 are shown as other. This has been expanded so the legend is placed over multiple pages. Each page will color the elements in the legend while keeping the rest as other. If we cycle through the pages, we can see that the new elements are colored while the previous page's elements are set to other. The design scope of still sections has been expanded as well. When high shear is present in a beam, the axial and bending check would be beyond scope in 2019i. If we right click check the beam SB17C217D2 in 2019i, it will show that this is the case. This has been expanded in version 2020 and the axial plus bending check will be performed when high shear is present as well. We can verify this by checking the same beam in version 2020. Tecla Structural 2020 also offers the capability to check for fire resistance. In order to perform this check, the beam must be characteristic beam, non-composite with fabrication type rolled, a single span pin ended, and restrained beam members subject to major axis bending only. The check is applied only to gravity combinations and is a check only. That's to say, it is not considered as an auto design criteria. We'll turn the fire check for beam SB17C317D3. If we right click check the member, we'll see that the beam passes all checks but fire resistance. If we right click design the beam, we'll find that it continues to fail as the section is not auto designed for this. The review view tabular data for the design summary only included members in previous versions. In Tecla Structural Designer 2020, slab and slab patches are now included. All slab items and patches associated with the slab are listed together. The table can be sorted differently simply by clicking on the column header, with the exception of the grade and the results columns. The summary table reflects the critical results for available RSA and static combinations. With this tool, we can quickly identify passing or failing slabs. Further to this, in previous versions, we could check a slab item and expand on the results to find the critical combination for the design. However, the analysis type was not listed. Typically, slabs are designed to FHAs and results, but if the level is matched in 3D analysis, the critical combination could be found in any of the three analyses running Tecla Structural Designer. Tecla Structural Designer 2020, the analysis method providing the critical results is now listed as well under the summary section of the design dialog. Tecla Structural Designer 2020 introduces a tool to identify panels with tension stresses higher than a specified threshold. This tool can be found in the review view, show alter state, assume cracked. The review view will show the current crack assumption as well as the condition of the panel when compared to a threshold value. This value can be changed in the properties window. The process to use this tool can be an iterative process as the stiffness used in the analysis will be different after adjusting the, the assumption. We'll start by assuming all walls as uncracked, analyzing the model and review and set the required panels as assumed cracked.
We'll set the threshold to 0.1 in this case and use the out of date option. This is an iterative process and so it is advised not to change walls from cracked to uncracked as this can cause infinite iterations. Thus consider using the out of date option on the first iteration only. With this in mind, the final product is a combination of light green, dark green and pink statuses. We can see that the condition has changed after rerunning Analyze All. We'll manually change the assumption for the red panels by clicking on them and running the analysis again after this. We found that the status has changed for some of the panels. We'll repeat this process until all panels are green, green or pink. A design can be performed where different modification factors are used for the wall design, providing greater stiffness to the cracks to the uncracked sections. Thus, a more rational design can be achieved. To assist in applying loads of a single value of lateral and torsional load per floor in a building, a new diaphragm load has been included. Such loads may be needed, for example, for tall, atypical structures requiring wind tunnel testing for wind loading, which is then provided as taller lateral and torsion level loads. These loads can be added manually one by one. Loads can also be applied using a table for rapid tabular definition, editing, and verification of diaphragm loads. All diaphragm loads are listed in the table. Note that multiple loads can be applied to a single diaphragm and that by default, only diaphragm with loads applied are listed. Loads can also be added manually in the table to existing diaphragms with no current loads as follows. Check on the show diaphragms with no loads checkbox <clears throat> to list all diaphragms with no loads currently applied. Select the load case you wish to add loads to from the load case list box. Select the row for the diaphragm, then click Add. The cells, are, the cells of the row are then activated and the load and X and Y coordinates values can be input. Data can also be pasted into the table from an external application, for example, Excel. Ensure that the data is in the same format and order and includes a Z level height as shown here. Note that this is not the same order as the diaphragm loads table with the Z height being at the end of the table. The load will be applied to the nearest diaphragm to the input set value if the Z value does not match another at a current diaphragm level and a warning will be provided regarding this. Note that when using the table paste tool, all previously model loads will be replaced in the structure. As we can see here now, the loads applied via the table paste are now in the 3D structure. That concludes this uh, webinar. Now we'll proceed to answer some of the questions that have been asked during the presentation. If any of uh, these questions require some additional research or a longer explanation or an example, We'll be sending out an email to answer with answers to these questions uh, later.